Okay, this is a, what you might call an overview of all eight Beatitudes or a super summary, uh, maybe a 10 minute review. The word Latin we started talking about is the, the word uh, for blessed. In Latin is the word B-E-A-T-I-T-U-S from which we get the English word to bless. And therefore the name or the title of the Beatitudes is the Beatitudes which comes from this Latin word to bless. A better main name might actually be the attitudes spelled with two T's because that's what they really are all about, having the right attitude. And I've often said that Christianity can be boiled down to nothing other than having the right attitude. And I think that's what Jesus is intending in, this, in, this, in, in these verses. Somebody would say to that, no, it's not enough to just to have the right attitude. You have to also have the right actions. To which I would respond, if you have the right attitude, then your actions will always follow like a cart follows a horse. The idea here is for, the goal is for us to have the mind of Jesus. As Paul said in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So this is a study of the heart of Jesus and hopefully we will be able to get the mind of Jesus in us. The New Testament, however, was written in Greek and there's no accident and we made three points, three reasons why it's no accident that the New Testament was given to us in Greek. Number one, because Greek is very specific in its meanings. The nouns and the verbs are very specific. The tenses and the conjugation of verbs are more detailed, more specific than English. Number two, Greek was the universal language of the day. And number three, the Greek of the New Testament times is essentially frozen in time, which means those specific meanings that the Apostle Paul wrote when he wrote the letter to the Corinthians or the Ephesians, those specific meanings of those Greek words remain today very much the same as they did in New Testament times. So those specific meanings that were intended for those Christians can be studied and understood by us as Christians today. So that's the reason we look at the Greek in these, in these studies. When Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit and so forth, there were two possible Greek words that he could have used for the word blessed in the New Testament. One of those is the word eulogio, E-U-L-O-G-E-O-O, -E -E which means in the Greek an external blessing, illustrated here by the blue man with things coming into him from outside of him. It is a blessing from without. And it's a blessing that, that's, that this is a word that is used in the New Testament frequently, eulogio. For example, it's used to describe how God blesses us in numerous and different ways. It's akin to the English word eulogy, where we say good things about someone at a, perhaps a funeral service, someone who's deceased. However, there was another Greek word that Jesus could have used when he said, blessed are the poor in spirit and so forth. And it is the Greek word makarios. Makarios is opposed to an external blessing is an internal blessing, an inherent blessing, a self-contained blessing, a blessing from within. So you notice the blue man now has all of these things within him in itself and they are not coming into him from without. Matthew chapter 5, 3 is literally translated, however, as an exclamation. So Jesus is not saying Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. What he more likely is saying is, Oh, how great is the happiness of those who are poor in the spirit. Oh, how great is the happiness of those who mourn. And so forth and so on. So now, so in the, in the Beatitudes, when we talk about happiness, we're talking about the real happiness, the genuine happiness, the happiness that comes from being something, a happiness that does not depend on one's external circumstances, and a happiness that no man can take away from you. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus uses the word makarios. Do you think this is an accident? I don't think so. Shake your head this way. He chose, chooses makarios because he wants us to have the perfect peace of those whose mind is stayed on the express, as expressed by Isaiah. And Paul says it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. Jesus said it this way in John 10, 10. I am come that you might have life and might have it abundantly. In John 16, he said, Your joy no man taketh away from you. 
The psalmist describes it as those who are like a tree planted in the streams of water. Their leaf does not wither and whatsoever they do shall prosper. There are lots of other scriptures which express this idea of makarios, the genuine happiness, the true blessedness, the genuine blessedness that comes from within us. The world today often looks for happiness in ways that they never will find it. There are many false substitutes for happiness. Money, power, drugs, alcohol, possessions, pleasure, land, and the list goes on and on. Some people are Facebook addicts and they think happiness will come by Facebook. Jesus says, I am the true source of Makarios, the genuine happiness. So if you want to really and truly be genuinely happy, find the heart of Jesus and be like Him. Brother Mid McKnight used to say that the Beatitudes are the sum and substance of Christianity, and I believe that to be true. They are the kernel, the very foundation of the law of Jesus. They're not just a one-time delivered sermon. How do we know this? Well, we infer this because the Greek word says, the Greek word for teaching here when he says, he went up on the mountain and began to teach them, saying, is the word edidaskin, and the tense in which it is conjugated, it literally means he was teaching this time and time again. So I don't think it was just a one-time delivered sermon. This is the essence of Jesus himself. Now, the first beatitude we've, we've studied, <clears throat> blessed are those who are poor in spirit. There were two Greek words for poor that Jesus could have used. One is the word tukos, which means extreme poverty. And the, and the other word was the word ponomai, which means meager poverty. Jesus chooses here the word tukos for extreme poverty. The meaning then of the first beatitude is blessed are those who are totally dependent on God's grace and God's mercy. The first key to happiness is to realize that we're not partially, but totally dependent upon God's grace and mercy. There's nothing we can do for ourselves. This then is summarized by the one, in one word by the term genuine humility, real, knocked down to our knees, humility. To those who learn this attitude, Jesus promises theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we attempted to show that the, that the kingdom of heaven is more than just the church. The church is a part of the kingdom and a big part of the kingdom, but the kingdom is a bigger concept than the church, and literally it means the rule of God, both here and now, and in some sense someday later, in a fuller and more complete sense. Those who learn genuine humility, tukos, beggars in God's sight, are the ones who can become citizens of the greatest kingdom that the world has ever known. That's the first beatitude. The second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. The word that Jesus uses for mourn here is literally two words, hoi pinthantes, which means literally the, open, the, the mourning ones. It denotes extreme sorrow, open weeping, bitter crying, and is none other than the biblical concept of godly sorrow, which we call repentance. So it is those who realize their total dependency on God, then realize their total guiltiness, sinfulness, that will turn to God and get the comfort that Jesus promises in the Holy Spirit. The word for comfort to hear in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, is the parakletos in the Greek, which means the comforter, the advocate, the Holy Spirit. So in summary, the second beatitude says, those who are truly sorry for their sins, sorry to the point of repentance and turning away from their sins, will have the comfort of the Holy Spirit in their lives. The third beatitude then, Jesus says, blessed are the meek, the word meek is the word prous, which as we attempted to show is the golden mean between two extremes, extreme anger and extreme angerlessness. And what it really means is total surrender of our lives in obedience to Jesus. It was a word that was used to describe in the Greek a horse that had been broken and completely trained by his master, a well-trained, obedient horse. And so the third beatitude, meekness, means obedience or surrender, which leads to the forgiveness that comes through obedience. To the meek, Jesus says, they will inherit the earth. The word inherit here is the Greek word kleronomio, which means to receive by inheritance or by lot. 
and it implies a relationship with someone. So those who are truly meek in God's sight will be related to God and will therefore have the unique ability to enjoy. And when, it, when Jesus said enjoy, inherit the earth, I believe he means those who are meek, obedient, have the ability to enjoy whatever it is that God has given them, whether it be much or whether it be little. The fourth beatitude, Jesus says, happy are those who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Huge biblical concept. Again, righteousness. Hunger is the Greek word panayo, which means extreme hunger. Thirst is the Greek word paneo, which means extreme thirst. And righteousness is the Greek word dikaiosune, which means rightness. And we attempted to show you that when Jesus said righteousness, he meant literally himself because he is the epitome of righteousness. Just as he is the supreme example of all the Beatitudes, the supreme example of humility, the supreme example of mourning, he is righteousness himself. So the, third, the fourth Beatitude says, Happy are those who have the starving spirit. They are starving for me and they will be filled to overflowing. The fifth beatitude then, Jesus looks, begins, has us begin to look outward. The first four look inward, but the fifth one begins to look outward when Jesus says, blessed are those who are full of mercy. The word grace is the word charis in the Greek, which means unmerited favor. But the word mercy, you re perhaps remember, is the word elios. The closest single e equivalent uh, English word is the word empathy, which is the ability to get inside of the other person's shoes, to get inside their eyes, see things through their eyes, hear things through their ears, to empathize. Then Jesus says, those who are full of mercy will show mercy to others, which is the, abil the, the ability to feel for the other person and then do something to relieve that suffering. Jesus says, those who are full of such mercy will have God's mercy shown to them. In the same way that we show mercy to others, God will deal with us mercifully. The sixth beatitude is blessed are the pure in heart. The word pure here is the word katharos, which means of one element, of one substance. The word heart is the word for cardia, which means the will, the desires, the seed of one's emotions. It really means what you are, the essence of your very being. And Jesus says, happy are those whose hearts are of one substance, of one element. And that substance is the desire to serve God. Those people have a very special blessing. They will be able to see God. And there are four, at least four ways that we can see God, the infinite spiritual being. We see God in others. We will see God in heaven someday. We, will see God in, we can see God in nature so powerfully in so many different ways. But the most powerful way of all that those who are pure in heart can see God is in Jesus. The only begotten Son, John says, He hath declared Him. So in summary, the, the, the sixth beatitude says, Happy are those whose hearts are full of nothing but the desire to serve God. They can see God by looking at me. They can see God by looking at Jesus. The seventh beatitude, the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. The word peace is, and again, a huge biblical concept. It comes from the Greek word irene, which means harmony, peace, or the absence of strife. And we attempted to show that Jesus is, is saying those who are peacemakers are those who are those who are able to carry out the Great Commission to bring the ultimate peace, the real peace, the true peace, the peace that passes all understanding by having one's heart being made right with God. And so the peacemakers is all about the, those who are preachers of the gospel, the teachers of the gospel. It's the Great Commission personified. Happy are those people because they have the blessing of being called God-like, called children of God, called sons of God. And finally, the happy sufferer, the last three verses in the Beatitude, blessed are those who are persecuted. The word persecuted comes from the Greek word dioko, which means to pursue, to do substantial harm to, to be out to literally get somebody and do bad things to them. Um, the, word, the word revile is the word onaditso, which means to upbraid or to reproach. 
So Jesus says, happy are those who are persecuted. Happy are those who are reproached. And what this beatitude is, is all about is really about endurance. Some people have called it the happy sufferer. We are refined because of persecution. Like gold is refined in a fire. We become stronger at the broken places because of the, of the brokenness that God sends our way. For those who are so refined, for those who are so strengthened by those struggles, the harder the struggle, the greater the struggle, the greater the reward. For those who are so hardened by, by those struggles, Jesus says, great is your reward in heaven. The word great being the word, Greek word megas, which means many, great, or numerous. The word reward meaning the, being the word Greek word misthos, which means higher wage reward. There are many rich treasures reserved for us in heaven, which is the boat of God. Peter says this way, There is an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away reserved for you in heaven. No, no wonder Jesus says, Oh, how great is the happiness of the person who has these eight characteristics in their lives. Thank you very much.